What's up? What's up? Welcome back to Brandon Smooth, Brandon Smooth TV. Back at you with another interview. Um, I told you I'll be coming back with that Gotham. We're still pretty early in the season of Gotham, so uh, I'm going to just do a quick rundown of the characters. And the last episode, Penguin's Umbrella, which is real good. So, um, so we all know about Gotham. Gotham takes place where there is no Batman yet. Um, and it follows a lot of the pivotal characters and a lot of Batman's rogues gallery when they're young. Um, they got Batman and Catwoman the same age. Penguin's young. The Riddler's young. Um, no Joker yet. That's what I'm waiting to see because they're going to have to put the Joker in there. Uh, of course, Jim Gordon's young. Um, he's not a commissioner yet. So he's just a rookie on the police force. So, uh, basically, Jim Gordon, we'll start off with him. He's basically the main character. If I had to put a main character, he would be the focus. Um, he's true blue, man. You know what I'm saying? By the book, you know, actually believes he could save Gotham. Gotham is a city that's already super corrupt. Uh, Bullock is his partner, which I like. He's just a straight-up dick asshole. You know what I'm saying? He was like that in the comics, and they stay pretty close to how he is in the comics. Um, he's just one of those beat-down cops, man. Just start taking bribes, didn't care, you know. Start seeing the city crumbling, you know, just found a way to save itself, man, and get as much money as possible. Fish Mooney. Fish Mooney is a character that was written just for the show, so she's not in the Batman comics. She probably will be, though. And uh, Fish Mooney go pretty hard. You know what I'm saying? I like Jada's interpretation ever. Sometimes I think it's a little over the top and cartoonish, but most of the time she's right on point. She brings much needed soul and fire to the show. You know what I'm saying? Um, got mob bosses and people scared of her. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bruce Wayne, which is like a 13-year-old kid in this, he's, I like his character, but he can, he seems kind of whiny and bitchy sometimes, and he's already starting to, you can see, take steps towards becoming a detective. Uh, he's, he's out there trying to piece together stuff. He's asking Alfred for different things so he can piece together and try to figure out who murdered his parents, you know what I'm saying? Right now, they don't make it too clear if he wants revenge, but he does want some type of vengeance for the murder of his parents. Penguin, one of the most dynamic characters on the show, and out of the villains, everybody probably say he is the most uh, dynamic character as far as you don't know what to expect from him. And he's a master manipulator, master snitch, and uh, he's he's playing all sides. We'll get into that later. Catwoman's a little girl, um, in, in this story, they have her witnessing the, the Wayne murders. So having that information and saying she see who, you know, she's saying she knows who did it. And she's seen their faces. Uh, that could be pivotal. But she's pretty much on point, too. She's stealing from people, you know what I'm saying? Very agile, uh, just like the Catwoman in the comics. The Riddler, we don't get too much of Enigma. He works for the police. Um, <clears throat> for the police force as, you know, one of those guys to figure out puzzles. Um, real good with clues, suspecting to kind of detect the stuff too, and on the forensic side of that. So I'm waiting to see more from him. Riddler working for the police in this story, I can see how it would work with the comics because he knows a lot of stuff. He got access to places, locations, and the the, the riddles and traps he set up for Batman. Uh, the, the they're complex. So him working for the police department at a young age will give them access to a lot of records and stuff that, you know, the average Joe wouldn't see. And, you know, knowing him, I think he's saving some of that, taking pictures, you know, keeping stuff recorded. Uh, so let's get into the last episode, Penguin's Umbrella. I took a couple notes as I went through, just talking points. First of all, they introduced Zaz. Zaz is a psycho killer. He runs around psych psychopath, psychotic. He runs around just killing people. And every time he kills somebody, he leaves a scratch mark on his arm. Now, this being the beginning of Gotham, you know, before Batman, you know, some years before, he only got a couple of scratch marks. But if you look in the comics, he has hundreds of them all around his body. You know, he kills hundreds of people. Um, also, in this episode, the police were pussies, man. They just let the Falcon, anything to do with the Falcon and the Mafias. Uh, of Gotham, the police just back down. They're either on the payroll, they don't want to get their own families hurt. You know, I can see this in the comic book world, but in the real world, that shit wouldn't have been able to go down, man. They would end up calling the National Guard somebody. Uh, Montoya and her partner, I don't... They the one that got Jim Gordon in the shit 
in the first place, you know what I'm saying? And it's they, it, 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 now they want to try to get him out, you know? And it's their fault that he's into it in the first place. I really wasn't too big of a fan of that because uh, Montoya always plays some type of snitch role or double cross, double side role. Every time I watch a animated thing or read a comic, anything, she's always been like that. So I never really liked her character. Um, getting back to Fish and Penguin. Penguin's going to eventually kill Fish. I know that for a fact. And we're just all waiting for it to happen. Because now they're on levels. If you watch this last level, um, Fish Mooney's behind Falcone. And then uh, behind Maroney is uh, the Penguin. And they're at the same level now as far as the rank in the Mafia. You know, he was just the, the, the dude that held her umbrella. He was a nobody. He was basically a fat joke. The big pun. And uh, now they're at level. You know what I'm saying? And basically one of the, the top mob dudes, right, right, right hand guys. You know what I'm saying? And that's the craziest thing now. So to, to come up from the bottom and come all the way and to be eye level with the person that used to be your boss, that's a real big deal. And you can see the animosity and hatred in between them too. Um, but overall, look. Penguin is a bona fide psychopath killer. You know what I'm saying? And then I like this version of him. I know that this version will probably be one of the ones that go into the Batman mythos because the the actor they got to do he does such a great job, man. He's he's cold with it. Um, Barbara Gordon is a dumbass bitch. We've seen Barbara Gordon yet, but you know his girlfriend Barbara King. She's stupid. You know she had a plane ticket to get the hell out of there. He was handling his business. You know what I'm saying? About to arrest the head mafia dude. What's this bitch do? Come back and try to save him and play it for his life. Bitch, what are you doing that I couldn't do myself? But I digress on that. Uh, overall, I like this episode. It ended so well. Penguin is playing both sides. He's playing everybody, man. And he's going to play everybody till there's no more mafia and no more people to be in his way. And he's going to take over. And I love to see the transition. Uh, so... Stay tuned for Gotham, man. Gotham is an awesome show. I'm going to try to get make sure I do episode by episode. If not, it'll be two episodes combined. And as always, thank you for coming. Peace.